Don't forget to turn on virtualization. So I know this may be a little bit out of order and that's okay. We, if you're going through the videos in order, we've got the server installed, we've got the networks configured, we've got the storage mapped. We're kind of getting to the point where it's ready to start the virtual machines. And you may have even jumped off that cliff and, and started building virtual machines on your own, which is great and I encourage you to do that. But there's an error that you'll get if you don't have, well, let me just show it to you, hang on. Take a look at this. This is Proxmox interface. Hang on, I, I haven't even recited it. I just ran into it. I'm like, ah, I gotta, I gotta show people this. So over on the left-hand side, you see I have a Ubuntu uh, virtual machine. I just created this as a test and kind of the pregame show. When you go to start, you get an error flashed at you down here, right? So I've got this, this VM almost ready to go. And, and if you look at it, it's like, what? It, what is this even saying? It says task error. KVM virtualization configured, but not available. Either disabled VM configuration or enable in BIOS. Not exactly the best English you could use, but what it's trying to say is this right there, is the DRAC interface for that server. It has a DRAC which allows me to manage it remotely, access the console remotely, all that kind of stuff. And if you look, if I expand this, this, oh, why'd you do that to me? Hang on, watch this, get logged in. There we go. Um, if you expand the section focused in on the hardware over on the left-hand side, if I can get there, there we go, and click on the CPU. I'm gonna zoom in because I'm sure this is like hyper small, right? Um, and expand out, expand out these CPUs. Take a look right here. It says hyper-threading, you gotta have that. Is it capable? Yes. Is it enabled? Yes. Virtualization technology, like most processors, is it capable? Yes. Is it enabled? No. That's because if you're not doing virtualization on the server, it's better to have that off. It makes more resources available for the things that they should focus on. But obviously no virtualization platform, Proxmox included, will be able to, to support that. So best bet, matter of fact, here, I'll, I'll do this I'll, because I, since I've got the DRAC interface, I can launch a remote uh, console. So I'm, I'm wow. Now, if that's not small, I don't know what is. Um, so I'm going to get this guy rebooted, um, get it into the BIOS, and I'll, I'll show you at least on a Dell server how to do it. Um, and, uh, and you can adapt that to whatever server platform you're using, right? So hyperspeed, cut clip, here we go. All right, there we go. We're getting back into the BIOS. I'm going to hit F2 to enter the system setup. You saw it right there on the top. Just And this, by the way, has been the Dell BIOS look and feel for since my, my, you know, Adam and Eve ate the apple, you know, if you will, it's, it's always looked this way. So F2 is your way to get into uh, system setup. All right, here we go. We've got the system setup. I'm going to go into the system BIOS and then, and this may take some poking around. We've got processor. Oh, there we go. Virtual, <laughs> that was not much poking at all. Uh, virtualization technology now enabled back finish save. Yes. Now when you boot the thing, boot, boot your server back up, uh, it will have the ability to do virtualization as it should. Otherwise, you're going to get those error messages and you won't be able to boot any VMs, right? Good. It's that simple.